Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, September 18th Community Development Committee meeting for Upmoreland Township. Uh, please join us in a moment of silent meditation. Please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, um, good evening, everyone. Uh, let the record show. With us this evening is Solicitor Sean Kilkenny, uh, Jim Hirsch from Gilmore Associates, Commissioners Peruzzi, Spearing, McFatridge, Township Manager Matt Canlin, Code Enforcement Officer Paul Portell, and Public Works Director Dave Elsier. Uh, any announcements? Okay. Um, I have no presentations. All right, uh, let's go right into the approval minutes for uh, July 17th, 2023. Any, any amendments? I don't have an amendment, but um, Matt, if, if you wouldn't mind giving an update on um, page two, item B, the second bullet point, just because uh, that, at, at our last meeting, we were supposed to um, approve a resolution for amusement devices over at the All Night Deli, but that was taken off the agenda. Yeah, so we received word that they've withdrawn the, the device. The device is no longer in the, the deli. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you can elaborate any more on that. The word I got from the attorney was that there had been some fights related to the machine. I'm not sure what that means. And the owner of the deli decided to remove them. Okay, that's fine. Um, probably don't need to go into any more detail than that. I just There's wanted in case. No one's using mics. Oh, got it. Um, yeah. Just in case anybody was interested in that one, because it was uh, an agenda item a couple of months ago. Yeah, well, thanks for bringing that up, because we've always uh, gone through a trial period with these to <coughs> evaluate the application and to see if it's if there's risks involved or whether we continue with them. So apparently, the the proprietor made a decision. Yeah. He, he didn't want to be in the business anymore. So how does that affect their right to do it in the future? They requested to use the to have the devices, right. and it was approved. Mm -hmm. Well, it was not approved because we never passed we the resolution. It was, we didn't vote on it. They didn't do the trial. We didn't vote on it. Never voted. Well, I think it was approved at the August meeting uh, for a trial. Oh, the, the trial was approved, but yeah. the resolution to maintain them wasn't approved. For for one device was approved at August. We issued the permit. Okay. They notified me on Friday that they're taking it out because they were they're just taking it out. Okay. And the trial period will run, and that's it. Okay. Yeah. Very good. That's that's what I wanted to get at. I, just, I sent a letter out to him today, basically Perfect. saying that. Thanks. Okay. Um, Uh, any uh, any other um, comments on the minutes? Nope. Okay, we'll put those into the record. Uh, and we'll go right into new business. We have no no nothing on land development subdivision, correct? That's correct. Nothing. Okay. This one. Um, We'll start with A, the groundwater delineation. Um, Matt, you want to bring us up to speed on that one? Yeah, there was a, um, the shopping center up here on the corner uh, is required to dig some wells based on some potential contamination, and they'd like to drill wells on our property. Uh, so there's an agreement that they would like us to enter into. I don't know, uh, John, if you would, if you can elaborate on what kind of agreement that would be, but there would be some sort of agreement that we would have to enter into. Yes. Over them all, and uh, the board will ultimately end up having 
from what I understand, well, they already started theirs on their property, it looked like. Uh, the only downfall we would have, if they do find any contamination on our property, it will have to be cleaned. I would assume we would clean it up and it's a matter of who's gonna be responsible for that stuff. Other than that, it's a good thing for us to, to do it and find out before so, we do construction too. Did I read that it was an insignificant amount, but it was traceable? Uh, that's what I, I read the same thing you read. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are there any other neighboring properties that need to be notified? They are. I'm not sure. They're doing the house next, right yeah. here. Okay. Uh, the first house, that's where I saw them. Okay. Okay, so uh, action required by us is, is going to be next month or, or vote on it this. We just need it written, right? Yeah, will you prepare the. Uh... Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let's do um, a Parkside and Sycamore first. Uh, the, the drainage improvements, I, I saw that you uh, put this together. Jim? Yes. Is anybody here for, for that? I don't see anybody here. Thanks for asking. You're welcome, no problem. Um, so we had talked about the drainage issues uh, at this intersection. And you all asked us to prepare a plan to um, address some of those concerns. We had talked about uh, the fact that it is not economically feasible to stop the stormwater from going on to this property. Um, but we had- We're to convey it across to a, the system. Yeah. But what we talked about doing was adding a sumped inlet to the street um, so that some of the debris that's washing onto the property could be trapped in that inlet and then cleaned out periodically by public works. Um, in consideration of that improvement, we, we did a one call and we found out that the sewer line runs directly underneath the existing inlet in the street. So what we can't do is put the sump in that inlet because by lowering the bottom of that inlet, we would be impacting the sewer line. Um, so Dave and I took a look at the, uh, just the area in general and what we come up with and what the plan in front of you is, is to put a new inlet on the edge of the right of way in the grass, it would have a, an M top and uh, that, that inlet there would have the sump in it. And what it would essentially happen is water would fill up that in that inlet and that grate is lower than the grate in the street. So uh, the hydraulic pressure, we would sort of push the water up into that inlet and it would overflow that inlet. And then we would grate a swale back to the wooded area on the property that's uh, being affected. That's uh, 2603, I think. Yes. Parkside. <clears throat> um, we would need a temporary grading easement from that property owner in order to install a swale. The inlet would be within the, the public right of way, so we wouldn't need a, a permanent easement from anyone. We would just need a temporary grading easement to grade the swale. Okay, uh, so we, we don't need a easement requirements for uh, like we normally have with a, a, a stormwater? Uh, well, what we would, what I would also recommend and you know, Sean, Sean's opinion, uh, but we would get a probably a, an O and M agreement for that swale so that it would remain free and clear. Yep. I'm in favor of this. I've gone with Mr. Spear twice. Uh, it's not so much the water. Water is going where it wants to go. The day we were there, uh, this is all township water that's running through there. 
out of our, comes into our drainage system, out of our drainage system onto their lawn, and an enormous amount of blacktop uh, to like large, large chunks of it, uh, like one foot by one foot by three inches thick. That kind of stuff is landing in this person's yard. So this way it'll be able to get cleaned up uh, before it spills out onto his lawn because everything dumps in that direction. So I, I also think this is a uh, good project to do because, uh, you know, we, we have found out that our, our stormwater is uh, inundated with silt and uh, undesirables. So this might be an application we can use township wide and for other applications. This work will be done in house, correct? Yes. Yeah, good. Uh, what's the maintenance schedule? Is it a trial for now to see how often we have to get over there to pump it out? Yeah, it'll be a trial because we're not sure how long it's going to take. But pumping it out is not like water. No, it's, yeah. it's taking debris out. Yeah, bag truck. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, any other questions on this one? Nope. I don't All know. Right, so we can move this forward to the full board? Yep. Any questions from the public? What's that? Any questions from there? Yeah. Any, any, anybody from the public have any questions regarding parts 2305? Uh, 2503. <clears throat> uh, Parkside. Okay. Uh, I did jump over a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> didn't mean to, to go off all the new business stuff. I meant to just put that one first on old business. So uh, I will go back to. Uh, the uh, request by Walmart for the waiver of uh, number storage trailers uh, to allow uh, this, this is a regular request we get uh, from uh, Walmart for their uh, seasonal holiday sales. So uh, I'm not surprised to see this. Uh, it's gone well in the past. Um, it requires a uh, inspection by the fire marshal. The only comment I have is the letter came from, oh, there you go, she's here. I don't know if I can come up yet. <laughs> My name is Lauren. I'm the covering store manager, so I apologize if I don't have information. I've only been there like what, five days. So. That was my, <laughs> only, my only comment is that Richard's no longer there. Yes. And he, and he oh, signed really? the letter. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Richard's no longer with the store. Oh, okay. All right. yeah. So we are requesting 20 holiday storage trailers as per previous years from my understanding and that I know that it was submitted so we were just wanted to know the whether it would be approved or not. So last year you had two separate requests one was for holiday trails the other one was for improvements to the store. Correct we, we are not doing a remodel this year so it would just Good. be holiday. Right so mm -hmm. uh, that's an easier request and um, like I said uh, we, we require a inspection by the fire marshal. Uh, for for spacing and uh, you know safety issues, sometimes you had you had a couple handrails going up in and out of trailers last year. So yeah, as long as that's, uh, I have no objection to this. None. I'm glad we have businesses that need it. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. All I say is just do as good a job as Richard did. Yeah, no problem. I'm great. just covering for it now, so. Uh, <laughs> right. well, but as your, long as I'm there, yeah, I will make sure. The amount of time you're there. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, this will need board approval also. Yeah, need a resolution. Okay. Uh, moving on, new business, item C. Laurie and Sh Sh Surrey Lane, the uh, demolition of uh, residential properties. I, I can take it, um, at least get it started. This is really just an update for the board. Uh, as, uh, as you know, we've been working on this for some time. The storm was over two years ago. And uh, the good news is we've been awarded the grant. It's in process. That's part of the bad news. It's taking a while for this to reach us. But we are at the point now where uh, we've turned folks loose to start doing the title work, to get prepared for settlement. And we've also asked Jim to go ahead and prepare the RFP for the demolition. And I think there's certain specs that you've gotten uh, from, I guess, in, inside Gilmore. They've done these before. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, something we, we've done before. So we have the specs. Uh, we know what permits are needed from DEP so we can work on the, it's essentially an ENS plan 
for each site and then the, you know, the bid package for the demo and get the permits ready to be submitted. So at this point, based on uh, my discussions with Susan Mazzatelli, remember she was the one that was gonna help us get all these, um, there's a whole myriad of, of, of documents and everything that need to be completed. Uh, we hope to be settling on these properties in late October. Now, when we go out, to, when we'll be demolishing, that's a great question because I don't know if we're going to run up against any sort of weather issues, but I guess we'll figure that out once we settle, go out to RFP, and uh, it might even be, you know, December before we award a bid. What's so. the final, so within the scope, what's the final state of the properties once the structures are gone? It'll be demolished, basins removed, filled grass. So just grade it out and plant it with grass. Township open space. Understand. I was wondering about if there, if there are any improvements that need to be happening in that area post demolition. So putting it back to grass, is that the best final state? I, I, I don't know how far the grant allows us to take it either. Yeah, we, we, would, we would need to get any sort of, we would have to get approvals for any sort of improvements. And I don't know about reforestation. Yeah, I'm thinking about, that, like, do we need a basin there? Is it better to plant trees? Or is a grass field the best scenario? Because we already know that that's a, yeah. a, a high flood zone. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that, but so, any, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, just to follow up on his comment, that's, uh, so we do know that that is a target area for, for penny pack trust that uh, part of the uh, uh, that they, they've the granny agencies have focused on that that tributary that runs through there and that area for improvements uh, you know because it's in this link to where a lot of work we've done already so that might be a good place to uh, analyze more for uh, additional stormwater management and I, I know that the demolition of the structures and turning that back into a grass field will help mitigate any current flooding issues. And I'm not looking for us at this point to spend more money than the grant in order to I do any more mitigation work there because this will definitely help. But if the grant allows for exploration or if there's other things that we can identify that would fall within the purview of the grant, then I would say we should look at it. Yeah, I think... I think what Pat's intention was is get it to the point of grass and then consult with the Parks and Rec Advisory uh, Group to see if there's any sort of things that they would recommend. I think we can make improvements that are natural, planting plants and trees. I think we can even do some passive recreation. I just don't think they permit any sort of, of construction. Yeah, understood. And that's not yeah. the question. Okay. Yeah. So just to follow up on that, that that's what we had at um, Bonnet Lane. Right. Uh, and we had to get permission. You know, put the basketball court in there and uh, anything we had, the, the dog park was also another request that, that I go through DEP for, for a fence in, in, in that floodplain. Okay. So that being said, one of the things that we didn't do uh, at Bonnet Lane and we're trying to get Pico to help us with is uh, taking those wires down that serve nobody. So are these particular properties fed by aerial electricity, poles and, and Wires or the, you remember? I don't. I don't remember. I don't know if they get their power from Marion Drive or if there's poles down Lori Lane. I, I don't know. So I think a grid analysis should be conducted. You know, just to identify whether some of this stuff can be alleviated. And you know, and, and if if there's some if FEMA can help with that because it's no longer necessary and it cuts down on liability and it takes. The wires and the poles out of that floodplain and we're out of that area and uh, we'll be okay. Looks like there's uh, utility poles and overhead wires along Lori Lane. Yeah. They're all on the opposite side of the street from where these from where these houses are though. Oh, so we may not, I know we own probably some of that property, but not all of it. Cause remember the one house that, I guess it depends on where those property lines fall. It's Lori Lena Township Road. Well, and also Surrey. Isn't no. Yeah, there's. There'll be three houses there. That you'll be able to take all the electric out because it only fed those three. One there. 
But, but we can certainly look into it to see if there are any opportunities to. Uh, any uh, public comment? Anthony hit on it. So 22 years ago, the flood caused the apartment complex to catch fire right. and it wasn't rebuilt. Now, granted, here we are 22 years later and now FEMA is buying out these properties because of a flood. I agree with you. I think something needs to be looked into just more than putting grass there like the apartment. It might not happen overnight, but next is it going to be FEMA buying out part of Fillmore Heights? I mean, it's it seems like it's going to spread the issue. I think it's something worth looking into. Uh, Maybe not doing anything, so, but seeing if the drainage needs more than just grass planting. So there. we've done a substantial amount of stormwater management okay. all over, and even like we think of that constantly when we uh, with the the bridge improvements at uh, Warminster Road. Mm -hmm. There's a, a substantial amount of stream bank stabilization involved in that, uh, but yeah, th they're valid points, and um, like Anthony said, uh, we're, we're pretty spent. As no, we maxed out, it was like if, if FEMA allows us, right? You know, to, to use that money for mitigation, then we would certainly explore that. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else? Anyone else? We don't usually get extra money on these things. They pretty much yeah. know the cost of yeah. everything to just to take it down and make it a a grass area. Uh, after that, it's not saying we can't go for a grant in the future, if it would deem perk and everything else uh, for something else. But the grant money will only uh, support taking it down and getting it back to grass. And these houses were all in floodplain, correct? Mm-hmm. And have flooded more than once. Okay. Any other comments, uh, Lori and Sari? Yes, there's no action required on that. This is just an update. Thanks, Thanks man. All right. Uh, moving into old business, uh, Dan and Trish Troilo, uh, we, we already covered this particular subject, and uh, oh. it is it's been approved to go to the full board for. Uh, uh, have you seen the plan? If, yeah, if, yeah. if you would like to talk, ask any questions, so please come up to the mic. Um, so I guess my uh, Patricia Troilo, uh, 2603 Parkside Avenue. I guess my main concern is this proposed swale. So this is not just going to be a hole in the ground in the middle between two properties, right? Is there landscaping or anything? One of my big concerns about this is that, like, I don't want it to be attractive to any of the younger children who are in our neighborhood. You know, they're very curious about the, you know, the sewer outlet to begin with. I don't want them wandering back there and falling into something. <laughs> you know, so is there landscaping around it or is it just like a giant hole in the ground? It w it'll be an inlet grate. So like one of those like metal grates that you see you know, in, the, in the street. Uh, okay. So there won't be an ability for a kid to, I mean, they're really heavy, to lift that off and then... So it's not going to be an eyesore between the two properties? No, I think it's going to look better than what it looks like now. Okay. Um, and then as far as like the swale, the swale is just a low area in the grass that will convey water from that new inlet back towards the wooded area on your property where, where it's going today. Okay, so is it going to alleviate any, are we still going to have flooding on the side yard and in the backyard? I would say that you're still going to have Are, are we going to use amended soils when we build a swale in there? We could use because amended I'm soils when we build a swale, but I don't want to oversell the fact that we're not reducing the volume or rate of water that's getting to your property. So, well then, okay. I can't. Okay, here, what, what, what we're looking at... Very quickly. Dan Troilo, 2603 Parkside Avenue. So what are we talking about? When I was there the one day, I came over with Kevin, mm -hmm. uh, 
you were showing me all of the debris right. that you get. What this is, is an underground culvert to say concrete area that'll have great, a grade over it out towards the street. To, uh, that should all fall into there, the sediment, the stuff that has filled your yard up, okay? That would go into here and we have township back, sweep, the street sweepers can vacuum that stuff out also. So that's the first thing that'll happen as far as uh, seeing a difference. So you will see that you're not gonna have a bag of asphalt you know, every time it rains uh, in your yard and everything else. It should fall into there and we will monitor how often we have to vacuum all that out. After that, the water that does come across into your yard should be clean. Okay, now from there, what we were talking about is how the swale will be taking out stuff you've gotten for the last 40 years in the that uh in, in that swale where oh, the, gar the garbage yeah yeah so right. the uh the so garbage the uh, it, it should be not as much okay. so um all that all that i've seen ducks oh, yeah. in your yard dan Yep. You have to use the microphone, but I, I remember growing up and, you know, we, we, we could go watch ducks in Dan's yard because that's where they like to swim. Uh, so hopefully, uh, you know, we have engineers who are designing this and helping with the build this. All that, the, you know, you saw the top of the pipe and, and that was originally a, a lower... Um, you bet it was. Yeah, it was low enough for us to crawl into it to get underneath Parkside Avenue just for laughs. Yeah, when I was yeah. 10 years old. Yeah, don't ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> I was probably in that pipe myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so what happens is all that stuff that passed through right. is what built it up. Mm -hmm. And then that affected the drainage of the water too. So hopefully the water will percolate a little bit better. And, um, it, okay. and, and the debris will go away. Yeah, we cannot guarantee the debris, right, but the water, right. So I, th I think, I think a, a point that's, that's being missed too is water's going that direction and the debris was clogging up the inlet that is connected to the sewer that's supposed to take the water away. So the strategy here is to give the debris a place to go that's not the inlet that's supposed to take the water away. So that way we can catch the debris in a separate area and when, allow you say, the water. when you say take the water away i don't know what you mean so the inlet that is in the street mm -hmm. is connected to the sewer no it's not it's it's it no dumps it's connected to a big hole it dumps it into my it dumps on our property now, what am i looking at here okay right now a big pole a right pipe now, pole a little yep. pipe from here to yeah over here that just daylights yeah. into the i do uh, i do not think, think you're going to see a lot of water are. go away okay i think you're going to see clean water but at least this board's finally committed to start. Great. Like and, I said, yeah, this has so, been, and I've said this before, this has been literally 60 years yep. of half step and back. Well, I'm going to not talk a whole lot, but it has been a long time. And this is as close as we've ever gotten to some uh, answer. Yeah. And the nice and part of this whole project, far out. it's being done in-house. So Perfect. you will be able to talk to Dave, to Jim. There are people from here right. it's not like we're hiring somebody else out and you right. don't get any information like, like i said i i truly appreciate it this is certainly as close as we've ever gotten in literally more than a half century so uh i'm looking forward to it my apologies for misspeaking on the on the issue yeah okay any other comments parkside and sycamore okay um, let's go back up to the top of old business request by the school district. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Request by the school district for waiver, a permit, um, and other fees for upcoming renovations in the administration building attachment. Um, so, um, we got a list of their, um, prescribed fees for what they want to do there for the improvements. And why would we support this or not support this? I'll jump right in. Yep. It's the same tax dollar. 
that uh, same person is paying the same taxes for them to do this proper project as they're giving to us. The only thing I, and I, we have been waiving fees because we're gonna pay that fee as a resident. My only problem with this is I would not hold this up for a full vote. Uh, we have been doing this every time they come up with a project and you know, we're willing to waive the fees. Well, we pay them as a township to use their pool, to use certain things that our parks and rec department does with them. Uh, so if we're paying them, there should be an intense discussion if we're gonna continue this, that it goes both ways so the taxpayers aren't paying on either side of it. Yeah. Uh, I would like, and that will be put on our schedule that we meet quarterly with uh, their superintendent and their uh, board. And Matt knows that uh, we're gonna put it on there to talk to him about that. It should go both ways. Uh, so the residents aren't paying in either direction for our use of our things that we already pay for. That's all well, I, I agree with you 100%. And I just wanna, I, I don't wanna hold this up either because it is definitely a, a benefit for the residents. But I want to go and, and state the, the, the concrete numbers for the record because I think that that's half the battle here. And Paul, thank you for, for going back into the records and finding this stuff. You know, since, since 2017, we've waived about $47,000 in, in permits. Um, and we're spending, uh, we're spending money to utilize their spaces. Um, the, if we waive this upcoming permit, it's another $66,000. So over the course of five years, they've saved about $100,000 from the township and we continue to pay them for services, but they're not doing that back for us. So I think, I think it's a fair swap of, of uh, shared resources between the two entities that share the same area of land and the same constituency. I agree 100%. And we have, just everybody, in the recent past, we have had very good relationships with them. There were years that prior boards for us and have never got along. Uh, we do have a good report and we have talked to them. Uh, so it's just a matter of us sticking up now and saying, let's make this even. And, and we, talk, we talk about a taxable footprint and it being identical. So it, it's, it's the residents that are paying the taxes and, and, and the school taxes and the township taxes but they're also paying the fees for the soccer club they used to field, for the lacrosse club they used to field. Uh, so, and we, we have been trying to get these, these fees in line for a long time also. So it was an opportunity to get there and uh, I appreciate the board uh, sticking to this and, and going forward with it. Just one question. Do we happen to know what percentage of this is gonna be used for private use? Yeah, I thought somebody from the school district. Um, I think it was one of the questions that was asked last meeting. We asked, we asked that two months ago. Yeah. We're going to come and explain that, but I don't think anyone... <laughs> we, we talked about whether it was going to be a taxable entity using those offices. But they, I don't think they have any agreements on people going in there just yet. But that was the, the idea that they were going to be able to uh, have enough space that they could rent some out. Yeah, I remember that question, and I'm pretty sure that they said this is not for other use. What they're doing now is just for the school's use. Right. Th these improvements, correct. These improvements, but yeah. W w the discussion was, you know, uh, out of that building when you rent space out, is that business going to be qualified for paying taxes? Oh. Um, and then this was discussed at the last quarterly meeting with the school. Um, I, I don't think they're gonna change their mind on this. They just feel like it's it's different, different fees. And they're not apples to apples. Matt, you were there if you wanna add to it, but um, I don't think they're gonna decide to not charge the township. <clears throat> and if they don't, we, and that's why we're gonna vote on this. We'll, we'll find out. I think we should make some discussions, calls to the some board members. Uh, to it, they've, they've had some changes in leadership over there. 
uh, very recent. Uh, so it's worth the discussion with them and maybe we won't continue this. But yeah, we should be discussing it with them just to see. To that end, I, I, I don't- to that, Yeah, to that end, it's like, been just, yeah, we've tried. Yes. I mean, if there was a fee for turning the lights on, you know, or something like that, I'm okay with that. You know, identical cost, but not like a uh, ordained fee for a field. You know, but you know, if you have to turn the football field lights on, there's a cost associated right. with that. Well, you they know. would say, I think, at the meeting that there, there's a cost associated with the township using their fields, their facilities. Um, you know, whether it's and when we did say that we considered it very similar to, you know, whether it's using the buildings or staff time or, right. um, but just wanted to let you know that last conversation did not seem like we were getting anywhere and that's a good that's a, a good point right because they probably have to staff it they probably have maintenance and all those other things that are that are tied to it but just in the same way where we are waiving a specific portion of our effort yeah but we are still charging them for other inspections part, and other things yeah. you know i think that we can come to some kind of an agreement where yes we will pay <coughs> salary for people who are doing the work for that amount of time whatever but there are certain parts of this that are just Know, general the electric bill for to running the filter at the pool. Yeah. yeah, agreed. So yeah, it uh, doesn't have to one hundred percent be free, but there should be some kind of a friends and family discount. I agree. So um, we want to move this out of committee. I think so. I think we we still vote on it. Right. We'll see where where everybody goes with it. So that's all. But in the meantime, it is on our agenda. Yep. And Pat and I and Cheryl to talk to them at our quarterly meeting about that. Which will take place after the yes. after the board meeting. But that's up to everybody if you want to vote for it or not. Unless you want to hold it for a month and have a discussion before that. Sounds like a good idea. Hold okay. It? Yeah, we'll Good. do that. We'll, we'll put okay. this on the agenda for the November meeting. So put it back on the October CDC meeting agenda. Yeah, we could give an update on the discussion from the uh, yeah. Okay. Meeting with the school board. Any other comments from the public on that? Okay, Byberry Road, uh, sewer feasibility analysis. Um, so this is a very interesting topic. Is there people here from uh, Byberry and uh, Orangemans? Okay. They were here two months ago. Was it last month? They were in July. They were in July. July, right. Okay, so um, we had um, recently did an evaluation uh, and the township wasn't too much involved in except that this was the, the place for people to come and <coughs> say that their uh, septic systems are failing on Manor Road in Ward 1. And um, they went through the sewer authority and, and then the numbers they were given were outrageous and uh, really it was a hardship for all those families to try to put the sewers in the way that the uh, sewer authority had presented it. So this idea is that Gilmore's given us a proposal for a feasibility study to analyze how this could be done at a more affordable cost. And the reason I think it's appropriate here is for three years in the past, I asked the board to uh, budget money for a 537 plan. Jim, you want to explain what a 537 plan is? A uh, 537 plan is a plan that's approved by the state, uh, by DEP, uh, for how, you know, what parts of your township uh, are sort of planned to have sewer, uh, you know, in the future. So how you would, what you would have to do to make those improvements, if there has to be uh, improvements at the plant because of ED, uh, increase in, in volume, 
So it never got accomplished. The sewer authority asked us not to do it, and, and the board didn't vote on it. What happens if, if the, the board of commissioners ordains that a 537 plan is appropriate, and, and we have the authority to do that, then the sewer authority is required to pay half the cost. Somebody jump in here and tell me if I have anything, anything wrong. Okay. So um, both the houses on Manor and the houses on Byburn and Orangemans would, would all fall into that feasibility study or the 537 plan because they don't, they don't have sanitary. And we have a lot of uh, houses, a lot of streets and roads that, where we don't have sanitary improvements. Uh, so they would, it, it would be a big undertaking. And it's, and it's a large sum of money to do that. So I'm asking the board to um, consider this. And uh, if it goes forward, some of these costs could be divided up against the houses that uh, would end up getting the sewer improvements. You are asking tonight just for these, this house. It was six houses. There are six houses there. You're asking us to do that in-house right you're not asking for the the 537, 537 plan. plan no i'm not why not hundreds of thousands big none okay that's why yeah and it probably should be done yeah but it's hundreds of thousands probably okay. would you say that jim yeah it's a it's a big planning effort but, uh would, would you have in hundreds of thousands would you have any idea what it would cost? Yeah. yeah, I think you're there. I know I'm on hundreds of thousands. Yeah, I mean, like I'm I'm thinking between one and two hundred. Okay, yeah, I think we're, we're probably one eighty nine the last time you discussed. It. Somebody yeah. brought it up. It was a big nut. Yeah. Uh, and all it is is telling us where we have the problems, or is it giving us actual uh, cost? Oh yeah, it's a roadmap. It's a roadmap, but is it giving us the cost of what it would be to all of those properties? Because we have them all over the township. Well, it would be. It would tell you what what the cost would be to install the pipes. It would tell you what the cost, what, what kind of improvements you would have to make at your plant to allow for this many more EDUs at the plant if everyone contributed. Uh, with that, the only problem I have with this, we didn't give it to. Penny Pack Circle, they, or the lane, I don't know where my brother lives. They, Pack Road. Penny Pack Road. <laughs> they, uh, they did it on their own uh, for that one uh, there and offered it to, I don't know, so seven, that was, seven or eight houses uh, back that's there. That's frontage on seven or eight houses. And if another house taps into that, the, okay. the sewer authority will accept, accept that as a... Uh, that's correct. But we didn't pay for anything there. They did it. Right. Woodlawn, exact same thing. They paid uh, for all of it. Woodlawn's uh, a little different. Uh, Grinder not, pump not, over three yards. Oh yeah, no, yeah. We so, didn't do anything that so, was done by Frank and Bar Metal. So everything. The, the difference between Woodlawn, yeah, you're right. We didn't pay for it. But the difference between Woodlawn and Penny Pack is that the sewer authority did not agree to accept um, anything on Woodlawn as their facilities. And we also have the, the same situation on uh, Sampson, going down the hill past Patterson. There's like four or five individual lines that come up the hill and they dump into a manhole. This is, this is a bad situation. So when we come across something like this, it's, it's the feasibility of establishing a, a, a trunk line that multiple homes can hook into. And it actually has frontage for uh, the farmhouse, you know, if we need a sewer connection there, we have no idea exactly what we have there or not have. I get what you're saying. I, the only thing for the five, that, whatever the amount was. I don't have, 8,500. Uh, for that, we're doing it for these residents, but we didn't for anybody else in the township. That's the only thing I'm saying. You want to do it for just them, but nobody else. I didn't the say. 537 right. would do it for everybody. Uh, and that is a shared cost in that one. Uh, you know, with other people. So I, I, I get the whole idea about being fair. And, and we've gone down this road with 
what do we do at Woodlawn? We were opposed to the uh, how the sewer authority handled that, but it went that way anyhow. Uh, we we were opposed to how they handled um, Sampson, and then when Penny Pack came in, it was a single resident, and the sewer authority was opposed to what we were uh, asking for them to do eventually, but that went through and and um, we got somewhere on it. Um, I, I, if you don't like this, that's fine. You can vote against it. I, oh, no. I, I, uh, so I'm thinking that if this goes well, this could be a model for the future and, and that perhaps Manor Road would be able to do it for half the cost that they were proposing. So I'm sort of, I'm sort of in alignment with your thinking on this one, Kip. Can we, before we, we push this one, is it worth identifying other areas and the associated cost to do a plan like this and see, because if you're saying this is a test model, right? Yeah. This is a test model that's gonna get applied to these other zones. It's gonna be a piecemeal operation of chipping away this study in zones or across a township to identify whether or not it's feasible. What does that add up to at the end of the day? Because if it's anywhere close to the half of the price that we would pay for a 537 plan, it might be worth holding on. Wouldn't even close. Well, I don't know what the other things are, right? Because the 537, from what I'm understanding now, and again, like, I apologize, because this is the first that I'm hearing about this uh, this type of study. It's a comprehensive, full system analysis of what the, the township can handle. The footprint of the sewer authority. Correct. So it's a comprehensive one. This is going to be a piecemeal one that's not going to put together like a long-term feasibility study or a master plan effort for the township. So if you start grabbing all of these little parts and you aggregate them together, you're not going to get that comprehensive picture of the full sewer system. Um, you're going to get parts of it and what it means. So what, what you're getting is similar to like the Penny Pack Road application. You're getting a pressurized uh, grinder pump system mm -hmm. that, that is uh, becomes part of the sewer authority. Right. We don't have that yet. Yeah, I, okay. So I, when I talk to, uh, you know, the residents involved here, I, I, you know, I proposed sharing some of these costs uh, if the system went through. How many areas do we have that would require a study like this that we know of? Do we have, do we have at least So every application is unique. So, yeah, but okay. So if you have nine or 10 and you just say, you know, that's 85,000 bucks right there roughly to do this. If you did it piecemeal and took this as, an, as a test case. I know Cheryl's gonna cringe here. No. Uh, I, yeah. How about find out a real cost for this? You do share it with the sewer authority, ARPA funds infrastructure and it really changes things for that plan I think I think we would need to understand right so there's a difference between there's a difference between people having septic systems on their property that they want to replace because they're failing and they're getting old and they're at a point where they need to make a decision as to whether or not public sewer versus an area that has never very never been serviced very well by a public septic system never should have been on that and it should have been something that was attached to the sewer system because one in my mind is township responsibility the second one is township responsibility the first one is property owner responsibility and i don't think that arpa funds should be paying for property owners responsibilities yeah i'm i'm, I'm not okay. with the arpa funds because it's a township system yeah, no, I agree with you. On this. And, and if all of the cases were the township did a difference <coughs> to multiple areas within this township by not connecting them to this public sewer system, then I would say, okay, let's look at that as an ARPA. Uh, uh, hey, Paul, do you have an idea of 
areas in the township that are not or the public sewer? Huntington Valley. Uh, right. Penny Pack Road. Huntington down by Creek, I think all along Huntington Road there from uh, Night Lane, I believe, okay. approximately. Um, Tower Road, Cathedral. Huntington Road. Whole section. Portions uh, of Bed Hill. Basin Mill Road. I mean, so it's not one little spot. Yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, that's no I understand. That's I, the reason I, I brought it up is, yeah, 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 yeah. the whole township thing here. Yeah. Because if it's going to cost us 100000 and it's it's infrastructure for us, and that's only. Oh, what, what's going to cost us one hundred thousand dollars? Five thirty-seven. Oh, oh, the five thirty-seven. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, no, I'm I'm. I'm really saying five thirty-seven for ARPA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not no, no, no. not eighty-five hundred. Right. I'm thinking make it a. Before I be willing to. there to do one finally. Yeah, I'm willing to uh, to to hear more about that. I <clears throat> I don't. The little that I know about it right now, and the reason behind these failing septic systems or the desire to be attached to public sewer, I can't rightfully say, yeah, let's use ARPA funds. I think I just need more information about it to see why we would be doing that. I think it's a logical thing. If it is township-based infrastructure, then it falls within the categories and should be looked at. But I, I think we need to categorize it a little bit better. And yeah, I mean, if this, this is six houses, eight houses at 8,500 bucks, uh, the study. Yeah, and, and once once the, the there's a a cost associated with it, that would be divided amongst the homeowners. Understood, but say you know you can't really scale up. You can't say that's for seven houses, and if you have eighty houses, it's yeah, the, no, 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 it's no, no, all proximity. Like, yeah, 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 but because I'm just thinking, the five thirty seven plan, there's just a whole lot yeah. of public uh, comment and tons of deep, yeah, that mm -hmm. kind of paperwork that we're not proposing yeah. to do. Understood, but to that point, you get a bigger bang for your buck if you do the whole thing. Yeah, but um, you need the sewer authority to do it with you, essentially, yeah. right? Because you can't go ahead and say, oh, we're going to put together a plan to hook up 100 Upper Moreland residents to public sewer, and oh, that sewer goes to the treatment plant, and the treatment plant doesn't have the capacity. Right. To, to take that, so then now that plan has to also be accompanied by plans to upgrade the plant over time to take on those extra EDUs. And that has, the 537 plan has all of that in it. No, oh, everything. Yeah. Yeah, where? You know, one thing to think about is, is my understanding is they do have some capacity, but that is gonna begin to be diminished as the development occurs up in Horsham. I mean, there's a portion up there that um, and, and it could get to the point where they don't have the capacity for the upper moral. I mean, it's an argument for the 537 plan is that whoever kind of gets there first, gets on the, the list, so to speak, then we can at least reserve capacity for our residents. Whereas if we do nothing, then theoretically in the future, that capacity could be taken up by other development. So, so what, are, what are next steps to come to a for, for, on this, like for in this, what? the 8,500? Uh, in, in my mind right now, I feel like we have too many open questions about other things associated with this type of study that passing this one would be short-sighted. So, you know, do we, do we start identifying other areas that are on septic systems and see what it, what it would so cost? So we, we've already had, studies? we've had this, no, I don't think it's individual studies. I think the reason that I think this is a, a worth investing in is that um, the sewer authority has resisted these pressurized mains, mm -hmm. and uh, and they're successful everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and they're more affordable application in, in installation. Uh, so even when they they gave these prices to uh, the Manor Road in Ward One. Um, they, they give gravity prices. I mean, there was there was a piece there that was a, uh, you know, a for instance, for a pressurized system, but the numbers are astronomical. And uh, so, 
So I, I mean, if you wanted to put a caveat on this, that if they build this, if if the the um, like the sewer authority did invest money in the analysis for uh, Manor Road, did Manor they, House. was that Manor House? Manor House. Manor House. Right. Thank you. Um, did so there was no cost handed over to those prospective uh, homeowners, right? Yeah, they they were made aware of the, of the cost. They made aware of it if they hooked up. Did they? Did what they the have cost money? was going to be? I think, believe they broke it down. Yeah, they they were informed of what the estimates were. The one that I sent to you guys, so the residents, yeah, but it was just too expensive. Right. So what what I'm saying is, they got to that point where they made a decision without putting any money into it. Right, because the sewer authority prepared those numbers. Correct. Um, so, again, if if we're taking a different approach because we didn't like the way that they did that or or the, what the effects was, if this was. Um, if they decided to go with this plan that some of these costs could be shared with I take a different approach go ahead you appoint them all <laughs> <laughs> i'm just i don't understand that we we appoint the, we appoint uh, that board no. <laughs> part of it yeah it's part of it We appoint three voting members of the sewer authority. And that's, again, the relationship we have with the sewer authority is much better than it had been in the past. Yes, it is. But I'm just saying, if there's, if you're saying they're not willing to deal with us, with these things, something should be thought about. Oh, I, 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 I never felt that they weren't, they just, you know, they did get to the point where they accepted the fact that they would they would uh, um, accept the pressurized system once it was installed and once we had multiple. Uh, have have we had that discussion with them on these properties? Not this one, no. I think that's something we should do. Okay. <clears throat> well, I think I mean I think if we couple that point with what Matt said got a lot of development in neighboring township that feeds into it we have township development that's happening here that's going to increase uh, uh, necessary loads we have other residents who are thinking about wanting to jump on this train too so it would give the sewer authority the information they need in order to keep a viable system they would be sort of foolish to not want to do this as a partnership and, and even talk to Horsham about it too, and see if they can chip in some some money to study it. But um, Horsham Horsham uh, contributes uh, bulk sewage. Okay. And they have okay. they have yeah. several they, they do have several yeah. uh, pressurized systems in Horsham already. Yeah. But the point being, the future is going to happen regardless. And if they want to be prepared for what's happening, then they might as well get the study and the data ready. So they can make the necessary changes when that time comes. Okay, so you would like to keep this on the agenda for next month and then have a conversation with the store authority? I think that makes sense. I think that's one of the discussions also on this. If we ask them to do it on other places to be involved with an estimate, why wouldn't we ask them on this? Uh, so without have the 537 altogether, just have them Well, have them do this too. I mean, yeah, both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But send a letter to Eric and or have Matt. So would you propose a partnership on this on this uh, I don't proposal? Know. I want to know what they say. Okay. So let's move it to next month then, and uh, we'll have Eric in the room or. So from this invite them to the next this, mm -hmm. invite them to the next meeting. Yeah, and let them know exactly what we're looking at for both issues: one for the uh, Byberry Road houses and what we're they're looking at and also a 537 plan so at least they can look into it before they get here i don't want to surprise them <clears throat> what, what would our jim what would our obligation be under a 537 plan if the if the board said tomorrow let's go ahead and do the, the study i guess would it just be the cost of the study half of the cost half the cost of the study is that pretty much because once the study comes out and the results are there saying these are all the areas, do we have an obligation at that point that you're aware of? Um, 
No, I don't. I don't think you have an obligation, but um, if the like I'm, I think it's a certain depending on if if you have areas that are supposed to connect to public sewer, right? Um, and then those areas uh, have a failing septic system. Then okay. I, I think you need to be working to extend sewer to those areas because if the 537 plan says that all these areas are supposed to have public sewer um, DEP when you apply for a on lot septic system they're not you know if there's new development the, but who pays has to be connected but who pays I'm not I don't I don't know the developer, the developer pays for yeah, it. Yeah, what I'm talking about. Like, would pay, but I'm thinking about a situation where, like, you've got one lot at the end of Penny Pack or mm -hmm. something, right? right? Like, is the developer for one lot going to extend public sewer two thousand feet? To no, but we made it so that they had to accept the people. Okay, maybe right. maybe Penny Pack's not a good example, but like, right, yeah, pick another like. Uh, cathedral or like something in in that in that ward like there's no public sewer really around at all so you know one lot gets built it seems like a, an undue burden to make them extend public sewer well, i was actually just i was just thinking about current circumstance so let's say you've got some folks on manor house we do the 537 it says yes this area should should, should be eligible for sewer their septic system goes bad in, in five years. At that point, who's responsible for covering the extension, the cost for the extension of the sewer? The homeowners. Is it still the homeowners or does the sewer authority or uh, municipality, in case us, have an obligation? Because they, they have to pay for it anyway. Yeah, else. If, if we ordain sidewalks or if we uh, approve uh, sanitary, then it's like an assessment to the homeowner. So what's the difference then if you do a 537 versus if you don't do a 537? Now where all of it is and everybody has the information to actually uh, get together to do it for a street. So it's just an inventory we, really then it's just- Yes, it's inventory and how to get to that point. And do we have the capacity? Yeah. You know, all of those things is what it's for. The homeowner's still gonna pay for the hookup unless this board eventually at some time yeah, it says we'll help you, you know, in doing it for an area or something like that. I'm pretty sure all sewers now that it's on them if it's to their house. Well, it's, it's the board of commissioners could could vote to supplement it or at any. That's time. what I said. It's, uh, but yeah, it's at that point. I think let's um, find out answers on both. So, again, my thoughts are this is a a, a type of system that the, the sewer authority has resisted. And we know that it, it functions well in other municipalities everywhere and, uh, and it's economical system to apply. So if, if this were done and shown that it's, it's working, they'd be more likely to, when they do a 537 plan, say, oh yeah, you know what? We can incorporate this system uh, in the certain areas of the township. We could do this and they could still say no. They could. So I want them here. That's fine. I, I understand that. Um, we're going to talk uh, about something that's cost. And it's cost to them. Uh, well, they might make it back, but it doesn't do us any good to do the study if they say, no, we're not going to do what you're saying. Can we also so, request so, a proposal for next month, next month's meeting? So next we month. have a number? Yeah. If, if they can get what for the five thirty seven one? Yeah, I mean, if we're going to discuss numbers and splitting costs, do we know what the number is? You, you're gonna you're gonna have to budget a lot of money for a five thirty seven plan. No, yeah, understood. If it's two hundred thousand dollars, right? Yeah, we would have to budget half that. Money. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Um. <laughs> I like I like Cheryl's look at me. <laughs> what? So the, I don't I don't know of any grants that are available for that. I mean, there's small sewer grants that are available for construction and sewer extensions, 
but I don't think that those are planning dollars. Those are more construction dollars. Okay. I'll look, I will look into both of those questions for next month. What a budgetary cost would be for a 537 plan. Yep. Um, timing and, and all that. And then also if there's any kind of grant funding available for me. And I think the other question is obligation upon the findings of the plan. And for this, I think Matt will relay to him. We want him here on this Byberry one for what Kevin's asking for and hear their explanation. Because I want him here telling us, yeah, about it. The two or 30. Yeah. But that's not with you. That, that's just, <laughs> I'm just saying, that's, I want them no, to be here it. and tell me. So, okay. so we'll, have, we'll have Eric or someone from the sewer authority. Oh, there you okay. So let's hold this till next month. No problem. Is that okay? Good. All right, this, this item will be continued. Any public comment? Just a quick okay. on that one. Um, <coughs> add to your list about when, when you, if you implement 537, uh, question is how much the sewer authority passes on to the consumer in its general base. And I think that'll well, be an eye open it's an eye opening issue for you. When you say contribute, you mean to the five thirty seven, how are they gonna get it or to each how as a result of the five thirty seven. Right. All right, all of a sudden there's a uh, <laughs> massive undertaking. Millions. <laughs> right. That gets passed directly to the consumer. Right. So does the 537 plan in general. I mean, well, the, the, well, all I'm trying to tell you is be uh, careful. I, I know this. So look, I mean, we generate revenue only one way. We tax, you know, and, and they charge. Uh, the, the township will have to raise taxes or, you know, take it out of our budget. And they, you know, have a sewer rental fee, you know. So that that's where all their money comes from. So every penny that we all spend collectively on our sewer rates is also going to be used for 537 plan, no matter what. Again, check before you leave. Check yeah. very carefully. <laughs> you, I you, understand everything you, you're saying. You'll be in the room next month? Huh? You'll be in the room next month? Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you're stepping on a landmine. I agree. Any other comments? Okay. Um, that covers our new business, the old business. Um, we're going to go right into our um, reports. Under code enforcement, we have a couple visitors here. So um, we don't have an agenda item for those other items, right? So let's start with um, the um, pool rental, swimming pool rental. Yep. Yeah, so I, I can just get this started. Uh, so following the uh, last meeting where this issue came up, uh, the folks, Mr. Berlin, are you, are you, you're not leaving, are you? No. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> um, sorry. Um, <laughs> Some residents uh, came to the meeting and expressed concern about the rental of a swimming pool. At that point, uh, the board asked that it be placed on this agenda. Uh, so I asked uh, Paul Portell to look into it from the perspective of the code to see what our code uh, said about it. So short answer, not anything, I guess. <laughs> right, and I, I did consult with our solicitor's office and um, uh, the solicitor's office rendered an opinion that we currently do not have anything that would prohibit um, that type of use in a residential property, um, other than uh, they would be required to have a business license with our business tax office. So. And insurance, right? That would go along with the business license. No? And, okay, and with this, and I've had some discussions with Sean, still looking into this. Uh, this, uh, this is not over, but because there is possibilities of change in our codes or something, uh, I still feel it's a commercial business in a 
residential area, which we do not allow commercial buildings, commercial businesses in there. Uh, we're allowed a professional use in a residential area. So there might be things we can still do, and Sean has, oh, uh, me if I'm wrong, but uh, Airbnb, we're gonna have the same thing. And we have yeah. had one in another, Sean has, in other, we are looking into this, but go ahead, Sean. You no, know, on the Airbnb issue, I uh, we do have some sample um, ordinances for that. I actually sent an email out to my firm and said, hey, has anyone done someone recently? Did have a couple responses. I'll get them over to Paul and Matt just to take a look at and see what might make sense or not make sense uh, for Upper Moreland. As far as the swimming pool issue, first time I've encountered this with the ex one exception, Montgomery Township. This came up about two years ago uh, because neighbors were complaining that this person kept renting out their swimming pool. Uh, and creating all sorts of noise and cars on a particular street. Um, and we, we were asked to kind of look into it. Then the neighbor moved. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna follow up with, with Paul and I, I heard some of your arguments, Kip, as far as you know, ways to interpret it. I'll bounce these off Paul and figure out if there's something we can do or not do. And also I will um, you know, survey the rest of my firm. They, no one else has had experience with this. Uh, but I did send an email out for that, but I'll send it also to some other solicitors to do what I do and see uh, if, if they've dealt with it uh, because, uh, you know, uh, just, just because uh, we didn't come up with it doesn't mean it doesn't, it isn't good and doesn't exist other places. So we'll definitely take a look. Yeah. Sure. Good. Okay, then there are a lot of issues with this because that we might be able to fight it on or might not. We just don't know. It's so new to us anyway. Uh, if we have a business, they get a business license, if you have a location, they have to give you sanitary. You can't rent a place with no bathrooms. So that means in their contracts, do they have to have bathrooms? Uh, and the use of them. There's just a lot of variables to this uh, that are unknown. And that's why we asked Sean to really dive in it because we see a liability that could happen, not to us, but to the residents that don't understand it, don't know it, uh, like when your homeowners excludes a business, uh, I'm sure they're not gonna, homeowners is gonna, I'm pretty much an expert, I did it for 40 years. Uh, they're not gonna extend liability to a pool when you're renting it out. Uh, so they'd have to have different insurance, which they might not know. They might just be trying to take the $30 a month that, or hour and whatever. 65. These are things that depends on where you go. I've seen them for 30. <laughs> okay. So, but things like this, this is why Sean is going to dive into it with other solicitors and stuff. Uh, and it, it might take us a little bit of time, but uh, we will find out what we're really allowed to do. So our code has no um, regulations against it. Like there's no regulations against vacation rental by owner right. for, for in, in our code. But if people come and use those services or rent a pool or a home and they create a nuisance to the neighborhood, we do have things in place where the police can respond to like a, a noise violation or uh, things of that nature. Property damage by a neighboring property. Um, Me as a pool owner in Shoemaker Village, there's 14 other pools in our neighborhood of about 40 to 50 houses. Anyone with Google Maps can now Google, and I've had it happen twice where teenagers, this carload of teenagers pulled into my driveway. My car was in the garage this summer, and when I just happened to walk out my door to order my flowers, they were going to use my pool when I, they thought nobody was home and not pay $65 an hour. And guess who's liable for that if one of them drowns? Me. The police wanted to know where they're using the bathroom. The homeowner's allowing them in her house. So now every person that rents her pool knows the whole layout of our downstairs of our house. When I go to work every day, I have an alarm, but how fast are the police gonna get there? Like that's my concern. 
How about a kid drowning in the pool? Is she CPR certified? A resident last week said when she would have family parties, she hired a lifeguard so that she had somebody there so that she could enjoy her party. There's so many safety factors besides a noise violation about this that is concerning to the residents in Shoemaker Village. We understand exactly where you're coming from. I do too, because I have a board. I just want to call to understand. Yeah. And, uh, and the police were shocked last week and extremely concerned. Well, and there has been at least four you, want, you have to use the microphone. Since, since my husband spoke to you on July 20th. Oh, he is speaking to me. But through email, Michelle. Right, it was a form. to you and then. If there was an issue, to call the police right. so to document it. And, and I have not heard anything. There were kids the doing drugs in the water retention basin two days after. Yeah, okay. And okay, that's, that's got nothing to do with pool rental. But it's right next to the house. <laughs> but, oh. I find it a little, I've been there 18 years, never. You have to use the microphone because this is all recorded. I never, I've been there 18 years and had never seen anyone in the water retention basin. I find it a little coincidental now that they're running the pool right next to the water retention basin. Like I said, it's opening the neighborhood up to a lot of other stuff. That's our concern. All right, your point's taken well and, you know, um, Paul just responds to what our codes say mm -hmm. and the board of commissioners can make a decision to change the codes that he has to work by. And, and that's what we're considering. So it's a valid point. We uh, talked about the, uh, the Airbnbs and the vacation rental by owners. We talked about that and, and there's just, yeah, I, it, it, but I don't think Ivy Stream Hideaway is being respectful to the rest of the pool owners in our neighborhood. It, it's it's everything. It. Like and it's, you know, they don't have a business license as of today. They don't. Okay. Th thanks for bringing this forward. We share your concern, and and we are looking into this, and this will remain on the agenda. And just so you know, Paul cannot do anything on any of this because this is our in our jurisdiction. Right. Until we put something in, then Paul can do something. Right now, we don't have it. We've never heard of it. And uh, so it's up to our board and our solicitor to come up with the rules and what we're allowed to do, what we can do for these things. Then Paul can enforce it. Other than that, he really can't do anything because we don't have anything on the books for it. So it's, it's us that has to do this. We, do, we appreciate you bringing this forward. Absolutely. We, we share your concern and the risks for you know, the entire township. And we're taking it seriously. But it's, it's, it's not, you know, Kip said it well. It's, Never heard of it. Thank it, you. It's ours. Um, any other comments on uh, this type of business being conducted in the township? Okay. Uh, continuing on uh, code enforcement, Mr. Berlin, would you like to address the board or th this committee? Code enforcement. Uh, Max Berlin, 3010. Well, just don't bill us for it. Tower room. <laughs> I'll give it to you wholesale. Um, we're going to kind of come full circle. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to mention one little thing about the sewer. I didn't want to come up before. I was the unwilling participant in a sewer in Gwinnett Valley, and uh, they balked at the pressurized or the grinder system. And the pipe in front of my house was 28 feet down because they wanted to run a gravity system. And what they did was they came up with some creative financing. So all of the homeowners were part of the creative financing and they'd send you a bill for, you know, 100 or $200 a month for the next 30 years. If you sold your house, you had to pay it off. And if you didn't, you paid it out. Thank you. Um, commissioners, other distinguished people, please forgive my back. Uh, this basically started with the idea, and it's a shame Fuji's not here. Um, I'm sorry, John Fugello. <laughs> I was a fireman with him in Plymouth a lifetime ago. Um, this started with the idea of a dry hydrant system at the top of Tower Road to have water brought through in a pipe that had no water in it, so to speak. Mm -hmm. It was a dry system uh, in the event of a fire. And again, I was uh, the unfortunate recipient of a fire. I know that the Hearst House at uh, Lennox and Cathedral had a fire. Our uh, 
our uh, senator's house burned down, and there was another one. Well, the other one uh, that was on Turwood. Uh, there's water there, but uh, so it, it started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It started as a dry hydrant system. Uh, I even went as far as having the engineers from Sam Wexler come out. We walked it off. We we came up with some budgetary numbers, and and I involved the township with that and. Kevin, you you were probably in with all those emails. Did a lot of work on this, right? And Sam Valenza was in with a lot of those emails, and it kind of it kind of went down the tubes, so to speak. Uh, after that, I was at a, a township meeting where they discussed uh, Mr. Downs' property and easy. that he wanted a variance. I can't remember where he wanted to divide one of his lots and they were going to try to make him a deal. You know, if you want this variance, let us bring a main down your driveway. He already has water coming down his unimproved driveway. And uh, I don't know uh, which direction that went. Uh, so that was from the, uh, you know, from a fire uh, standpoint. And um, I, I did also mention that uh, you know the township may be on the hook if there's another fire. God forbid if there's a fatality, uh, somebody's going to throw a res ipse loco there at you. But you know, that's uh, neither here nor there. So uh, we began with the uh, firefighting end of this, and where we've come to at this point <clears throat> is uh, water quality. And I had my water uh, done uh, by the uh, excuse me by the um, lab over here. Uh, there's uh, over behind uh, Sam's Club over, uh, there's, there's a lab over there. Uh, here it is, uh, Eurofins, anyway. And I'm uh, again the un unwilling or unfortunate recipient of PFAS. So I don't drink my water anymore. And I've told my neighbor next door because they have little kids, I said, bottled water. And I'll brush your teeth, okay, shower, wash your hands, don't drink it. So I drink bottled water only. Uh, we did take this over, and I, and I have I have a kind of map of just our area, and this doesn't necessarily include uh, anybody over on Mason's Mill or Huntington. This is just the Turwood, um, the hunk of Turwood, uh, the piece of Edge Hill Cathedral and Tower. I'm not sure if there's water down Oak Ridge Farms, but um, you know we got some numbers back from Aqua that was disturbing on a good day. That you know uh, they estimated in 2022 that the cost would be around a million one to run uh, water to 47 homes. <laughs> And that's just that block that I had just mentioned. Um, and they said that, you know, Aqua was willing to contribute about 700,000, but that the uh, individual homeowners would have to throw in uh, $9,500 toward the uh, main or toward the project with an additional $7,000 to hook up to the main. So, uh, you know, I know that there's a lot of people in that area that are on fixed incomes, and uh, that's, that's, that's a big number. But uh, why I'm here, and, uh, you know, I, I kind of did a little bit of homework into the Upper Moreland Township mission statement, saying how they're committed to the health and safety and general welfare needs of the community. So uh, I'll put that forth to you. Uh, again, Kevin knows all about this, and uh, I, I think something needs to be done. Maybe someone's got to go approach the Navy. Uh, I talked to Montgomery County um, Department of Health. I mean, I, I've, I've taken it as far as I'm humanly possible of taking it because I have a day job. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I would, uh, you know, put forth to the commissioners to give this some serious, serious consideration um, to at least get some public drinking water. Uh, fire safety would be lovely, and I'm guessing you could do both all in one shot. So. Um, and, and to bring the water down, and I don't know if they were thinking of taking, continuing the main from tower around Edge Hill, down Cathedral, over to tower, where you could just come straight through the back of the 
uh, cul-de-sac at the top of Tower Road over to Turwood, and there's a, there's a main right there. So we, we have looked at both of those. Um, the original proposal, you, you were absolutely right, was to go straight through uh, the uh, easement that we were asked to be granted from uh, from Downs. Yeah. And uh, we withdrew uh, by the threat of being sued uh, by Mr. Downs. So that deal fell apart. Right. And, and, and we did a analyze an opportunity to, to bring a pipe by providing an easement into the cul-de-sac of tower and then going the other way down Cathedral. During that time frame, uh, we were able to have this uh, aqua extend the water main down uh, Turwood Road, almost to Edge Hill. Mm -hmm. And then they tied in uh, Turwood Hill Road and uh, the other cul-de-sac. Brennan Circle, Brennan Circle, but I don't know if they skipped the other one. I don't think that got a water main. Um, well, that's Valenza South. It goes right past Brendan. Right. So they'd have to take it into the... Well, Brendan Circle end. came from the back. Oh, oh, okay. And it stopped at Turwood. It never went all the way through. Oh. So they extended the water main down. Uh, Davisville tied it into uh, Brendan Circle and then brought the water... The water main also came through um, from a cul-de-sac uh, in your neighborhood. Turner. I think it was Turner. So Richard or Martin. It was yeah. on Richard through Turner, Richard, Richard Martin. Martin. Yeah. So it, it, the water main went through that and went to Turwood Hill Road, and it, it never went all the way down. So now it's all tied in, and, and it's a loop system. So you did get increased fire protection uh, because now you have a shorter run for a fire hose. But I I do believe that your your proposal is legitimate or your you, your ask. Um, I do think that uh, the level of uh, PFAS that's in your water has to be analyzed, and, and there is money there for that. Horsham Township went through a, um, a very, very trying procedure where they, they uh, put a monthly uh, price on their, on their water system for every customer. Now, I do believe that they got some of that money back. You're, you were paying it, right, Paul? So, and then they got new water mains up there and they, um, um, I think that charge went away, but I don't think the residents got anything like back. <laughs> but they got a lot of water mains put in. Would you well, they also had to take some uh, corrective action for PFAS in their public water, if I'm not mistaken. No. No? Okay. No. I think I because <laughs> the, the federal government still hasn't done that. Yeah. Would you be willing to let us see your report of the PFAS and stuff? Right here. Okay. <laughs> uh, is, is it okay if you gave it to Matt so we could say, because that get, does give us numbers Absolutely. to contact people and be a pain in the ass to them. Yeah, yeah. And like, find uh, out some things. Went back over to Montgomery County Department of Public Health, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, just the one number, um, you know, uh, if, if I'm reading this right, the, the limit's 1.8, I'm at 2.9. Okay. So and so this here's my entire report. You're absolutely more than welcome to it. I think you might already have one. Yeah. Okay. So uh, okay. that's about it. Thank you. And uh, yeah, public order would be nice. So would public sewer, by the way. I'm uh, in that group that uh, wouldn't kick and scream. And absolutely, the grinder systems, they've been out for a bazillion years and they work really well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Thank you. Any um, any comments from the public regarding the uh, good enforcement? No, the potable water on Tower Lane and Cathedral, Davis Hill, Edge Hill. What's the other street? Lennox is back in there. That's just one house. No, no, across across uh, Edge Hill Lundy? from Cath Lundy. Lundy. Lundy, 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 Lundy does not have water, right? So obviously, the more people involved, the less per. Yep. But um, it's still a huge undertaking. So he's talking about 
$16,000 approximately per household with, with that proposal. Um, no other comments on that? Okay, we're moving on. Paul, um, the rest of your report. Uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Spearing. Uh, the committee has my July and August 2023 and comparison uh, 2022 reports, monthly reports. I have nothing to add to any of the reports, but be happy to answer any questions the uh, committee may have. Hearing none, we'll go right into the public works and uh, recycling report. Thank you, Commissioner Sparing. Um, you have my August 2023 report for public works and recycling. I have nothing further to add, but we'll answer um, any questions that the board or the audience has. Yeah, so before we talk about the trash cans, how we make out with paving? Paving's completed. Um, Slightly a little under budget, which was good. Well done. Um, put together the new road list for 2024. Um, that will be submitted with the 2024 budget. Um, well, I hope everyone's satisfied with the roads. Um, hard work for my guys. They actually enjoy it, doing it. Um, so. I hope everyone enjoys the new roads. When you're doing these roads, are we are we running into a lot of curb repairs, or is um, it just here and there? Here and there, um, probably all together with all the roads that we did, maybe uh, 140 feet. Oh, okay, good. Then at least they're lasting. Yeah. So what we'll do is. If there isn't enough, you know, a lot of times the curbs fall. If there isn't enough, if it goes from eight to six, we're not going to do anything. You know, yeah. if it doesn't, curbs are going to have an inch reveal. We're going to change it. Okay. So, I just didn't know how much yeah. we had to do every year. Right. Yeah. It's not that much. Good. Well, I I have to tell you, I'm very impressed with the uh, uh, the condition of the roads after we've paved them. So I think your, your crews are doing nice work. Yeah, since I, I started here in 2013, I believe in 2014, maybe it was 15, we started, uh, we had a 12 year plan to repave all the roads in the township. Um, we rated the roads A through D, A um, being the worst, D being the best. Um, as of now, um, a lot of the roads are still at D category that haven't been paved in 10 years um, or a new development and it hasn't been done. Um, so in that 10, 11 year period, we did 95% of the roads in the township yeah. already. And it shows. Yeah. So, you know. This next year, my plan is to do a couple of the longer roads. Um, so. Well, we're talking about paving. Are we going to be doing the paving at Farmstead? Next year. Next year. Okay. Next year. We just did North Wellgrove Park. Right. Did the concrete work there and paved it. I saw the, I saw the sidewalk you did at North Wellgrove. It looks very nice. Uh, good job there. Um, so also in your report, you have um, contacted PennDOT about pothole concerns, all state roads within the township. Yeah, always. Whenever, since the state roads um, are maintained by PennDOT, right. if there is- We're not. Health, yeah, they are. Right. Well, they're not. Right? <laughs> so um, whenever we get a call for a pothole or we see one on our routes, um, I'll call PennDOT. I contact the um, supervisor, District 6. They're super, or they're foreman, not the superintendent or, or, or the lead there, but the foreman who's responsible for our area. Um, <coughs> then they'll come in. 
So we notified them that we want them to dig out that driveway on Edge Hill Road, and they haven't done it yet. Well, that is um, Clancy, is his name? Yeah. I'm still waiting for a phone call back from him. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, we had some interesting um, realizations. We're also waiting for the city inlets to be changed. And the buckled blacktop. Uh, so I do want to, in addition to the city inlets that we have identified as their responsibility, uh, the two manholes on Easton Road by Mill Road, really out of sync there, the stormwater inlet, uh, the, the stormwater manholes, uh, one's really bad. I hit it every day. No, it's, it's a, it's a manhole that's. Why do you hit it every day? Well, to drive yeah. around it. <laughs> Because the volume of traffic on Eastern Road doesn't permit you to drive around anything. Unless you go to a different hour. That is the definition of insanity. You do it over and over and over. <laughs> well, I do slow down. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so I, I just saw that Penn and I took a, a very uh, heightened awareness into like project on Davis Hill Road. So I think we should remind them about a couple of things that they have that still are unfinished. Um, well, things they do and they don't do well. So uh, Easton Road coming down the hill, try and stop a truck on there. That's what we were just talking about. Yeah, I'm just saying, I mean, that's, that's horrible, in the, especially in the rain. But it's a very costly thing to fix it. <laughs> Pretty much put concrete under it. Okay. Um, First tractor trailer load of trash cans were delivered today. So three more tractor trailers will be in tomorrow. Um, when I was leaving today, they, I would say they probably had a two, three hundred on their trailer that they were going to deliver. So I don't know how late they were delivering today. So uh, do they automatically start with those now using them? No, no, no. Next, next trash collection next week. Okay. So they're telling me everything should be completed by Sunday, Monday, the latest, which is good because no trash on Monday. So do you have any recommendations for how to get rid of or other ways to use the trash cans that you already own that need to be replaced? You can use the trash cans, put your yard waste in the trash can. You can, you, you know, the brown bags, put them in there if you want. Um, you can put a sign on them. Um, I was going to look into because the. Uh, put a sign on them for what? To be taken for away? For the trash to take away. Yeah. But maybe it was a nice sign holder for you. Yeah. But I was also going to check with um, the trash can um, manufacturer rep is in town. Um, he mentioned to me before that. Um, they had a community that, uh, I, I don't know what the cost is. They recycled the cans. Like if we collected the cans and then they would take them, I just don't know what the cost is. Okay. So that way they're not going to the landfill. Yeah. Yeah, no, that would be, that would be good to know. Right. Because uh, everybody's going to have at least one. Right. So, yeah, we're, we're telling everyone either to put it out or uh, reuse it as um, something around the house for, you know, for yard waste. Are we interested in looking into a recycle program for the trash cans? I, I, I would I would be interested in that. I mean, I'm keeping mine. I'm going to, you know, drill holes in it. Yeah, drill like, holes in it. Keep the water out. Yeah. You know, uh, but um, sure, I mean, you, you could put it under a rain barrel. I mean, under a downspout. Yeah. Operate as a rain barrel, too, if it didn't have holes in it yet. I personally would be interested in knowing what that cost would be. I'll find out. Okay. Um, I already have, yeah. you know, some people like myself already have yard waste trash cans. Now I've got an additional one that I don't know what to do with. And I don't want to throw it away. It seems right. That's it. Okay. Um, so that's a great segue into your recycling report. Um, do we have a, uh, any analysis on the plan for 
the future as far as this consortium goes? Uh, no, I have. Uh, there hasn't been a meeting, which I was invited to. And no updates. No updates. So there's still a couple different plans. Well, well, the last that um, one that I was included on, they were seeing if we, like I mentioned to you before, where all the municipalities would all, um, I guess, commingle into with a grant, um, right. the 902 grant, and they thought their understanding was we still could get money and still be able to have our own grant, but that w apparently that wasn't the case. So our money would go to... So our DEP grant would have to be yes. king, part of the consortium. But um, my opinion, it, it's not cost effective to do anything at that. Just continue to what we're to, to go on a bid process. Right. And what are we on a, a three year bid for the, the recycling? Yeah, it's three with a um, few years of <coughs> extensions. And that's whatever the market bears for that. And it's yeah, it's based on a, an index that the consortium um, you know, told them to use. So basically, their 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 bid is based on how much they want to charge to sort the. Um, <coughs> so everybody that's in the consortium, are they all commingling, or does anybody separate paper? Well, um, Abington separates paper. They separate cardboard. Okay. So the residents have um, two cans or three cans: trash, recycling, and. And we did that at one time. We did that um, before 2018 or 17. I, uh, I realize it costs money, but I'm not looking to make it any more difficult on uh, homeowners as it is. It's, uh, the situation we have now is, is a big change, and uh, the automated trash is going to be a big change. So uh, thanks for that report. Anybody have any comments on uh, public works or recycling? Okay, um, let's go over anything to the engineer's report. Thank you, Kevin. Our September 2023 report is in your packets. Uh, the only thing that I want to point out is that we've been uh, working on the police station land development plans and advancing those. Uh, they were submitted uh, to the county for review at the end of August. We're scheduled to go in front of your APA this Thursday, and then uh, you guys will be seeing those plans for review at your uh, October CEC meeting. So uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions anyone has on that project or anything else in my report. Um, the only uh, project that really, like, I'm sure everyone's <coughs> interested in is uh, the Olive Garden. How's that going? I see they've. Uh, cleared some of the way for the, um, the sidewalks along Eastern Road. Uh, how, how is that project moving forward and uh, when do we expect it to? Um... So that, that project's moving along fine. Paul, what would you estimate based on the, the building work when, when they would be opening? I, December, De December's their opening date. That's what they're saying. Say the end of November. <laughs> they still have a considerable amount of site work. <coughs> yeah. I just heard it today. <laughs> this generally the building uh, drags on longer than, than the site work. So that's what I was um, Before I go into item. No, all you can eat breadsticks for Thanksgiving, Kevin. <laughs> uh, on, 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 on number, I, I do want to talk about number 13 on your report, but I'm going to start with number 14 right now. Uh, do we have uh, the uh, the mod wash coming back anytime soon that we're aware of, Paul? Uh, I haven't heard from them for, for an update. So I would assume they're still working with okay. PennDOT. Um, yeah, I, I haven't talked. It's a very challenging site for traffic, yeah. to manage traffic. So uh, let's go back to number 13, uh, 1740 County Line Road. Uh, Happened to visit that site yesterday, and um, in the area where they're expected to be cleaning up, I noticed they 
drop the load of millings and spread it all out. Apparently, the reason they did that is so they could get in there and, and anticipate, anticipating starting the basin work. Um, I spoke to the wetlands engineer today. Uh, we're going to set up a pre-com meeting in the next few weeks. Um, I just got their stormwater m and agreement back because it got rejected by the recorder of deeds. There, there's some mis missing information on that. So um, they're anxious to get started on the uh, restoring that basin all the way in the back. But to answer your question, um, I, I did ask them about those millings and that's so they could actually get in there to start the work. So, okay. We issue the permits. And, and we expect that all that material that went in there, the grade to change to what it was originally. Correct. And better. And uh, Jim Hurst did review um, the restoration plan for that basin. So better than it was before. Before they right. filled it in. <clears throat> okay. Um, that's enough for me. Anybody else have any questions about the... Uh, uh, Township Engineer's report? Nope. All right. Um. <clears throat> the, um. I'm scanning through the uh, landscape architect's report right Yeah, now. I can also answer any questions that you may have on that. We, this might not be for you, maybe it's for Paul or Matt, but have we gotten anything back from federal regarding the loading dock mural and development? No. The Actually, only I think they were waiting for us to, to provide comments on those initial drawings. The last conversation, I happen to, I stop over here all the time to look to see the progress. Uh, they were thinking of shadow box windows and stuff in the back and not so much the mural itself. Okay. And Good that idea. historical, uh, Udo's here, but Ray is that kind of the, the mural, you're drawing the attention to the loading dock, mm -hmm. uh, being up so high and all that stuff. So I know they were looking at, I think everybody that was at that meeting, like the trolley, they cut out trolley and metal or whatever. Uh, on the one wall, and I know that's an engine engineering. They're almost that wall should be going in very soon. Uh, the extra wall that they got to put in, but they're going. They have not come back to us with the shadow box. And yeah, we haven't seen that because they did. But they did send us a revised mural. Yeah, well, we very colorful. That came after the meeting. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I don't know as though we're going to continue with the mural or they're going to come back to us again. All right. So I, I just want to make sure that they're not waiting on anything from us. Because oh, no, no. We've... Nope. Okay. <laughs> okay. Any other questions from the public, other commissioners regarding the uh, uh, landscape architect report? Okay, hearing none, we'll move into traffic. Unfortunately, we don't have a representative here. I, I will say I made a call to PennDOT today uh, to a few people and they assured me by the end of today we would have our approvals for the emergency that you said they will do it today and I understand Matt they did call you they did well we got the we got the permits, so they, permits. Emailed the permits. they said they would get it done today so I made that call and so I think Kip said heads were gonna roll uh, <laughs> okay. I took the gates two years and four yeah, hours exactly. <laughs> and, and that that includes the relocation of the one on davisville i think it includes all of them i think doesn't it i think i didn't see the email yeah it, it came over you were i you know the issue was um right there on on york down by the car dealerships yeah i, th I think it's you were copied you probably haven't seen it yet it just came out this afternoon so uh, i think it does cover all the the gates so whatever Kip said was very convincing. <laughs> oh, we, we have everything in inventory, so we're good to go. 
for a couple of years. <laughs> he said, I kept Kevin from calling you, so you have to. <laughs> that was kind of the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> And he told me to shut up. <laughs> uh, so uh, where are we with the sidewalks on War Mr. Road? Those, my understanding, they're supposed to start in the next few weeks. We had our pre-construction meeting out there last month. And I think, uh, um, what I understand is probably supposed to, it's only supposed to take like four or five weeks to do the whole thing. So if they start end of September, beginning of October, they should be done by end of October, beginning of November. And how about this? So there's there's two pro projects I would like to ask Anton about, but uh, hopefully we'll hear from him next month. And um, and that is, you know, our Blair Mill Road project and the one that is under construction by Horsham right now. And then how we're going to um, coordinate Commerce Road at the same time. Um, and then we have in addition to that, we have the pipe that's got to get replaced to the bridge on Maryland. Um, yeah, Anton regret, he had a, actually a family medical emergency they had to take care of. So he was planning on being here. All right, well, that's understandable. Yeah. Um, and uh, did we have any feedback from uh, a contribution from UPS? I'm supposed to be scheduling the meeting with, I won't mention his name, but we finally found a contact with Kip's assistance actually through a permit process. Uh, so we're, I'm supposed to be meeting with this guy hopefully in the next week or two. Excellent. Did you Would you call like this morning and get a contact? With <laughs> no, 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 no. This is a week or so ago. Uh, actually, maybe even a little longer than that. But so it took a number of emails, but he finally responded. And uh, are any of you interested in attending that? I want to hear what it is. Yeah. I do. Okay. I'll let you know once we get the, we've been trading emails, so we just need to set the date. I'm acting like you. You have to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any, uh, any other comments, traffic engineer report? Anything from the public? Okay. Um, you want to give us any updates on the turnpike, Matt? Uh, there are no update on, on which one, the interchange? Yeah. Yeah, so they are out to, to bid right now for selecting the engineering firm. They've reduced it down to two firms uh, and Montgomery County will make the decision that was decided by the group. We've provided input. Um, actually, McMahon is one of the firms. Uh, so we provide our input, and I suspect in the next uh, week or so, they'll make the decision. Um, so that's really the next step, is selecting that engineering firm. Okay. So it was a, a bid proposition or no? It was RFP, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay, that's, that's good news. Um, EAC. Good evening, Lynette. Thanks for being here. Sure. Uh, so at our August and September meetings, we talked about a bunch of stuff. One of them being the Outdoor Environmental Education Center over behind the library, the fence, the new fence is in. So it keeps small kids from running into the street so we can uh, start doing more things out there. We also now have an ADA compliant door that goes out to there. So moving along. So we should be able to put in um, some things, well, maybe this year, maybe not, depending was, on what. Was the door installed? I'm sorry? Door, oh, yeah. It has been installed. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, a buildup of the sidewalk and yeah. everything. Yeah, so that's all done. Uh, we did. I did send in the application for the Birdtown grant. Uh, haven't heard anything yet. Um, are going to move ahead with some of that anyway, though, because um, I, I bought some plants, and if I don't get reimbursed, that's life. 
Um, also would like to do an educational sign and that I do want the grant for and um, have been working of course with Pat. We've picked out the area. He's going to clear the area weather permitting near the end of this month and then we'll start planting. We are also hoping to start a leave the leaves area uh, near the middle school. There's a group of 18 oak trees down the one drive that's uh, next to Wesley Enhanced Living. And oak trees are actually the most used tree as far as wildlife is concerned in Pennsylvania. So it harbors literally hundreds and hundreds of species of beneficial insects that birds need in order to feed their young and they're just really important. And it's important to leave the leaves because a lot of those uh, insects actually drop down to the leaf litter to overwinter. And so when we go rake up all the leaves or we mow the leaves, we're killing those. And uh, you've probably heard our bird populations have dropped by about a third in all of North America. And part of the reason is they don't have any food to feed their young because we're trying to keep our lawns you know, with no leaves, et cetera. So we're gonna be working with the district mainly to have them leave the leaves and we would hopefully supply an educational sign as to why we're doing that. And then hopefully it would catch on. And of course would inform teachers and hopefully use the area for education. Um, also hope to start our going green talks again that we used to do before COVID. And uh, one of the things we kind of like to do as a topic, uh, David can chime in on this. It seems like residents are confused a lot about what goes into the recycling bins. And I know there's stuff on the website and there's stuff in the newsletter, but I know one of my neighbor's trash cans when I lived over in the other neighborhood fell over once. It was their recycling bin. And I was pretty appalled to see what was in there. So I sorted their trash for them. Um, but I think people are just really confused and there's a lot of wish cycling that, oh, surely this is recyclable, I'll throw it in. And then of course it's not. So it seems like it might be useful to put out some information and maybe have a talk or I don't know, do a flyer or something. Um, some other things we've thought about is um, how to protect your watershed. Uh, the reason for doing what I'm doing of getting rid of my front lawn, uh, why that's so important to do that, and instead put in something that has wildlife value. Also maybe helping people learn how to do some just small repairs so they don't throw everything out. Um, those are just some ideas, certainly open to lots, lots more. Um, We'd also like to promote the Ready for 100 concept, which I think we presented again pre-COVID. And the idea of this is for the township to basically pass a, a we want to do this sort of thing. I'm not even sure what that's called. It's certainly not an ordinance. Um, referendum? I don't know. What do you call that? Resolution. resolution. That's the word I'm looking for. Or resolution. No. Where we, you know, the township would basically say we would like to be 100% renewable energy by, you know, 2040 or whatever. Um, and I'm hoping the police station that's being planned is incredibly energy efficient. And um, you're supposed to nod yes. <laughs> Um, this is not really my department, but the, uh, <laughs> I'm sure the architects are uh, working on ways for that to happen. Okay. Um, also, right now with the um, um, Inflation Reduction Act, there's up to a 30% credit for municipalities. So before municipalities were excluded from that sort of stuff, but now they're included. And so things like um, solar, for example, solar right now is just really a great plan. Not only can you get credits back, you get the SRECs and deposited to your account. And all summer long, I have run my air conditioner for zero cost. And uh, it's kind of cool, kind of nice. It's so very cool. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Because um, it doesn't cost. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Pico charges $10.54 for you to be on their list, but that's what I paid all summer cooling my house. Uh, and, the, and then I also put a battery backup. So when we had the power outage not too long ago, I still had electricity. So solar is just really 
economically feasible at this point. You know, it reduces your energy costs, it gives you SRECs, and you can get grants and credits at this point. So those are the main things. So any questions, comments? Yeah, so uh, I, I like the idea of the education about recycling. Um, one of the things I think of is, you know, a, uh, a soda bottle, a plastic soda bottle. Uh, my understanding is the bottle's recyclable, the cap's not. Uh, I mean, that's, that's an example that I see, and I always see the top screwed on the bottle and they're thrown out together. That's kind of my understanding that it's okay to put the cap on there because the bottle's not going to get truly recycled. It's probably all going to just get chipped up and most likely sent to an incinerator. Oh, to be honest with you, I don't know where it goes after yeah. you get sorted, right? We're paying them to sort it and they sell it. So yeah. whatever they're doing with it. It's interesting because it's just in all over Europe and they make their bottle, the cap stays on the bottle, even when you, there's actually another tab. So when you recycle, recycle, and they're pretty good at recycling over there, uh, it stays on the bottle. You, it's, you almost got to rip it off on, that, on a bottle. I thought that, I didn't know why it was that way. I was biting the thing the whole thing. Finally, somebody told me. <laughs> yeah, stop biting that thing, right. <laughs> I thought it was. Um, so I, I think, uh, you know, as when we talk about education, I automatically think of the schools. So does the EAC have a contact that enables you to put information in the virtual backpacks through the school? Um, yes, I think we can do that. Um, actually, tomorrow morning, um, a couple of EAC members are helping over at the intermediate school to put in a pollinator garden with all native plants. And so that person is certainly a contact for the intermediate school. She runs the environmental club, so we could put it out to there, but yeah. So earlier we, we talked about quarterly meetings that uh, administration between the school board and, and the township have. So, you know, I, I would think that if we wanted to put information in the virtual backpacks for the school, it had to start at that level first. So is that something you would be inclined to uh, yeah. offer information to for education? Sure. Oh. That's an easy question for Matt to get. Actually, at one point, I had the directions on how to put stuff in virtual backpack, but due well, to the COVID I, time warp, it's... I, I just think your analogy about what's recyclable and what's not. You know, I don't even have a solid understanding on it. So this is a good thing to, to say, hey, you know what? Don't put your, your egg cartons in the recycle bin. You know, but do put this in there. Uh, the argument about the pizza boxes, you know, it's, it's always there. Uh, you can put in the non-greasy part. <laughs> no, I was actually told by someone who's a big time recycler who, who sells or buys recycling from big manufacturers. I asked him about the pizza boxes. I said, so you don't put greasy pizza boxes in. He said, put it all in. But not that layer. Like not if, that, that, that wax paper. Right, if there's a wax paper or a fiber paper that keeps the pizza from the box, that's a good thing. So always recycle your pizza box. Really? So we do. There you go. All right. The things you learn. Yeah. <laughs> you have a list from the original of, of, of what's recyclable. Yes. That, I mean, maybe we should get that back out. It's on the website. Actually, yeah. it, I assume, so I looked at that, and, well, and it, I think it needs some updating. With well, a lot bins. of the problems that we have with people, they'll put a trash can in the recycling bin. Right. So a trash that's can? Trash can. Like a kitchen trash can and recycling. Tall kitchen can. Because it's plastic, or... they think oh, it's recycling. Oh, okay, okay. So things like that. Kids' to toys, plastic, they'll put that in. Yeah. Right, so anything usually numbered. Yeah. Right. If it doesn't have a number, it doesn't go. I did learn that. Actually, yeah. There's aseptic containers where you get your um, 
maybe chicken broth and like the juice boxes, mm -hmm. they can be recycled. Right. They can? The, yes. They can. Like yes. the paper boxes that are wax? Yes. Like your wine box? <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. Wine bottles go in there all day long. <laughs> the bag out. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you got to pull the bag out of the wine yeah. box. That's right. I assume also that you don't want anything tied with twine. Because everything has no, to go probably in, not because yeah. it's going into the recycling container. Right, and the recycling uh, facility, as I recall, with that tour, didn't want anything. Just no plastic bags, no chip bags. No, yeah, they didn't want any. And it says on the what's up, no tangles. And yet, in another place, it says to tie up paper with. Well, that's probably because they sort the paper out. Yeah, yeah. they're trying their best. Yeah. Or if it's uh, commingled. So I mean, on our website, it says that. It's uh, a, yeah, I have to change that because that's how we wanted it before we right, switched. Right. Right. So I so said I think it needs an an update now that we're going to have these bins and and everything goes in there. Well, we've been recycling with the can since 2019. Yeah. So hopefully the residents. Uh, should be doing it the correct way. It's 19. And that's why they have lids on them too, to keep them dry. Um, and keep out critters. Yeah. So I, 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 you know, the, the whole plastic bag ban has, has really identified our lack of education community-wide. Uh, you know, I went to the post office, I sent something, single-use plastic. Well, yeah. they're, they're, you know, the packaging of it, the, if, if it's, you know, you want to wrap something in plastic, it's, it's a bag that, uh, you know, they sell it right there, you know, like all that stuff, you want, it's just as fragile, wrap it in this plastic, put it in this plastic envelope and then mail it. You know, it's all single use. Yep, we got a long ways to go with plastic. So, and, uh, you know, that was one of the things that I was upset about is that it's, that has to go to the state level. And, you know, it's ideally it would be at the federal level, but that's yeah. not going to happen soon. Yeah. So you realize there's a big pushback from the fossil fuel industry on anything that reduces plastic use because they see the handwriting on the wall that we're going to electric cars and a lot of electric stuff and they still want to stay in business. And so now they're pushing plastics and they're not going to be happy to not make plastic so plastic's not going away we know that well a lot of it needs to and it needs to be made out of something other than petroleum i understand that but what i'm saying is you know you manufacture a car there's like tons of plastic in that but it's not it's not getting like disposed of on a regular basis it, it's it's well, sustainable I, sustainably used um, in Europe, I believe it has to be recycled. It's my understanding that pretty much anything made in Europe, the manufacturer has to take it back and recycle it. Like appliances and just pretty much everything. And a lot of parts of the cars, etc. We're way behind Europe. Okay. So that's just my take on the education and I appreciate that and uh, we have to find new and innovative ways to educate the public. Anything else? Okay, thank yeah. you very much, Lynette. Yes. Next up, up on the Historical Commission. Oh, I'm sorry, my, my bad. I should ask questions for questions from the floor. I'm talking about recycling stuff. It's part of the new trash cans. You're required to put trash in a bag just, you know, you're having another bag. Well, you were using a bag already, correct? Maybe. You can uh, use a paper bag. Yeah. Go ahead, Lynette, you want to respond to that? Yeah, so please don't. Um, so you're never going to get a plastic bag from me in my trash. Um, and I guess I really hate to see that recommended. Well, uh, is it here's, the, here's the problem. Mm-hmm. When you dump the can, uh -huh. 
if it's windy, uh -huh. trash can fly if it's not in a bag. Uh -huh. Then now we're spending time to pick up and clean the streets from trash. Is that a problem now with the recycling bins, a big one? Recycling is different than trash, right? Because you're, you're talking cardboard, paper, and there's times. We just cleaned up a whole spot over on um, County Line in Davisville this Friday. Uh -huh. Got the call at like 12 o'clock in the afternoon that it wasn't our truck, it was another truck. Bunch of paper and uh -huh. trash right there on the corner right by the bank right along um, from Centennial down to County Line. And it took us, you know, we probably had like seven, eight guys out there mm -hmm. cleaning it up. So that's why, you know, track plastic bags would be great to collect the trash. Ouch. <laughs> Uh, any other comments on the uh, EAC report or recycling while well, we're talking about it? Thank you. Uh, next up, Upper Moreland Historical Commission. Anyone here? <laughs> Thank you for being here. Uh, Udo Marin, 401 Greyhorse Road. Uh, I am the Vice President of the uh, Historical Commission. Uh, I guess earlier this week, or maybe last week, uh, the Commission was sent a report of our meeting, our normal meeting, which is Tuesday, the first Tuesday of the, uh, the month. Uh, as you are aware, the, uh, the mission of the uh, Commission is to maintain and create historical site and inventory in, in the township and also educate the community in the historical uh, uh, sites, part of the township also, and assisting the township in re and residents in pre preserving significant properties. So that's, that's the basic mission. Uh, as part of uh, the first, our meeting, uh, we had a September 12th uh, uh, presentation from uh, <coughs> Jean Sorg from the record of the deeds, which uh, uh, during that process, we did send out a letter to all the, the members of the historical uh, uh, houses, which had certificates. Uh, it was well attended, I, I believe. So it was in the library uh, on, on the 12th. Uh, the historical uh, commission requests, uh, as part of this, uh, the, our meeting, we we're requesting an approval of our year, yearly event, which will be held at the at the farmstead, uh, and that involves uh, a uh, the event involves a um, you know a, a, um, a, a scary story uh, similar to what we had last last year, which had a fire pit, that had uh, <coughs> paranormal readings, and. and we're anticipating some uh, reenactment of, of uh, some history items. Uh, we did contact uh, security and the fire department to support it. So we're asking for you know, approval to go ahead with that, which is coming up in October on uh, the 28th. And that's on the Parks and Rec agenda for next week. Okay. Do we, do we need an actual vote for this? Um, I, I think it's just on the agenda for awareness. Just for, because yeah. Because it's an open fire pit. And, and it. I couldn't I, remember I, if we actually. Yeah, I think I asked Pat about that, and put it on the agenda just for awareness. But I think Pat had said several years ago the board had given him authority to, to make those decisions. When... There's no booze, so. Yeah, it's. Sorry. Light bulb. <laughs> they do have there will be Diet Cokes. They got cookies. Yeah, we'll have cookies and Diet <laughs> Uh, as part of our meeting, we also uh, discussed the, uh, the finalization of the uh, three historical sites signs, which we're, uh, it's been long overdue. It's almost two and a half years since we started that. Uh, it's for the Dupree or the Manor House, the uh, Willow Grove Methodist Church, and the W Restaurant, which was the uh, Willow, Willow Inn. So those signs are ready for fabrication and placement. May I interject for a second, Udo? Yep. Do we have all those signs out of your office? I have all the signs in my office. You still have all the signs in your office? Okay. So 
those signs are ready to go back to treasure sign to get printed? Uh, there was one editing thing that had to be corrected, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the stack. <laughs> So they, there's one thing, like a couple of uh, sentences has to be correct, and then it's ready to go. Okay. You'll let me know? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. And uh, the final uh, part of the report uh, in our, um, we're continuing a, an inventory list, and we're updating the inventory list of all the potential of the existing uh, houses that are on the historical uh, uh, site and potentially getting some, some new historical sites. So that that is going to go into, um, we're updating it and probably try to get that into a digital so, digital format so that the uh, um, everybody could access this in the future. Yeah. And that's that's a very large undertaking because of the, the 75 year rule yeah. now. More so houses have come available. A lot of homes in a lot of different tracks across the township are now approaching that 75 year age. Yeah. And it's uh, quadrupling our, our available assets. Yeah, except that it's, it's taken a long time to get people to right. get involved and actually yeah. wanting to do it. So it's just it's a matter of us producing that, that process and trying to get that started and getting more people involved. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Hugo. Any questions? Um, no, I, I attended the event at uh, Armstead Park last year. I found it uh, very interesting, and, and it was a great event. I also stopped by the library at the uh, Recorder Deeds event, and that, that was that was very interesting. I did ask her afterwards. I said that you know she was telling us uh, all these deeds that they had that were traceable because um, you know they had they were. There was a will, and they could be tracked, and there was there was records. I said, "Well, the fun stuff is when there are no records, and the families are fighting. You know, that's that's, and it ends up in court." So she said, "Yeah, that does happen, but we didn't talk about that." So, so the intent of that that presentation was to get uh, owners involved, knowing that there's things out there that they can access, either go up to Norristown or do it online if they prefer, and sort of update their their properties uh, in terms of knowing their, the history of their property, that's, that was the intent of that presentation. It, it was a good event, and I was fascinated with uh, the amount of records that they had. Thank you. Thank you to the commission. Uh, any public comment? Uh, any visitor comments? Other business? Commissioner comments? Thank <laughs>